you are not alone in this universe. That sometimes can be good news or maybe frustrating news if you don't know how to tap into the higher self and gain that wisdom. So in today's episode, I want to talk about different ways that you can begin to open the inner wisdom communication, getting that guidance and support that sometimes, maybe most times, we need while we're in this human experience. Let's go get that nugget. You know, living life is hard. Being a human is difficult. Somewhere in your life, you're going to realize that this human existence isn't all there is. Like we are not meant to just go through things and live hard and struggle all the time. And somewhere in your life, you begin to wake up. In the last episode I was talking about, even the last several episodes, it's calming the storm and waking up and and becoming present. It's really understanding that there is a greater there's a there's a greater thing going on here. There's something bigger than our mind can fathom. And it's kind of exciting, but it can be kind of frustrating. The exciting part is the limitless possibilities of where your life can go and things that can change and ways that you can begin to release your limited limited thinking and beliefs and stories and begin to unlock the the love and joy and creative possibilities in your life. And that's when things can get really exciting. But we have to kind of figure out a way to get out of our human experience and get into the depths of who we really are. And I, I you know, we hear that a lot if if you're in any kind of a personal development or spiritual development realm and you're listening to other podcasts or you're 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 following other people, that it really matters about getting deeper and getting your mind out of the way. And that's probably one of the biggest struggles that I hear, you know, clients or customers talk about is I just can't get out of my mind. I just can't get away from all the incessant and obsessive thinking and retelling those stories. Well, you know, my 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 ongoing joke is that's why it's called a practice, a meditation practice. It is always it's it's like if you started digging a hole You could just keep going and going and going and going, and eventually you would reach the inner workings of the core of the planet, but you just keep going. And it's like Alice in Wonderland in the and the rabbit hole. So, but I will tell you this that as you keep digging and you go inward, that it actually becomes expansive. And you tap into these inner energies of the universe that is so different and so profound that your life just starts to unfold in ways that are like miraculous. Money starts coming in, love starts to find you, careers and your purpose start to unfold and your relationships get deeper, your connections get deeper, your communication gets better. Everything just gets better and expands. So we think we take this problem that we have that's right in front of us and we go, God, we're going to have this problem all the time and forever and ever. And my kids are always going to act like this or my my husband or my wife is, you know, we're always going to have the struggle or there's never enough money or this job's going to suck. Life is stupid. There's all these things. But those words become the story. Those words that you add with that emotional elevation become the story. It becomes your story. You are writing that in the universal book of your life. And I cannot emphasize enough about the words that we use and the emotion that's behind it. That's the creative energy. I'm sorry, that's the creative engine, if you will. You sit in a car with no engine and you are never going anywhere. There's no power. There's no experience. There's nothing, right? That's your mind. Sitting in the shell of the car with no engine, that's your mind. So I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but I'll wrap it around here. But if you sit in just the shell of a car, you're not going to, there's no power, okay? You put the engine in the car and you fill it with gas and you step on the gas pedal, no matter what direction you choose, whether you're going to go down a straightaway or a two-track trail or you're going to drive off a bridge, that is the power of your emotions. So if I am using words, encouraging words, my life is going to start expanding. And am I going to be without challenges? Well, no, but I'm going to be better equipped emotionally to handle them. The other 
is if I use terrible words that are not encouraging, they're discouraging, they're criticizing, they're judgmental, they're, they're negative, I might as well drive off the bridge. That's where you're headed. And you're headed towards, I want to say, disaster. Because eventually those words compiled on top of, of you throughout your life eventually creates disaster. It first starts with emotional state. Your emotions are terrible. You feel terrible. You call it anxiety. You call it depression. You label it and then you get medicated for it. You go and see a doctor for it. Then you, you know, eventually all of that, you starts to wear you down, break you down. And you're like, God, am I ever going to get over this? And the answer is no. The answer is no. Not if you keep pointing in that direction. You have to start looking at things differently. You have to start looking at things differently. More encouraging words is going to help pull you out. That is that is taking the, the the steering wheel of the car and turning in a different direction. Oh gosh, I'm about to hit a tree. Turn the steering wheel. If I'm using discouraging words, you're about to hit a tree. If you're criticizing yourself or someone else, that's all energy that you're putting out. You're about to hit a tree. So it starts with our thinking. First, the waking up process. Just like I talked about in the, in the last episode. Begin the waking up process. Snap your fingers, look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm tired of living this part of this aspect of my life and I'm ready to change. I'm ready to change. I am ready to change. I am ready to change. You cannot change the world without changing yourself. You cannot change the world without changing yourself. If you're not willing to change yourself, you might as well just get used to the suffering that you are creating. I know that's hard. I know that's kind of a punch in your face. But you know, I am standing here ready to help you overcome whatever challenge you've got. And what I'm trying to do is take all of these teachings that I've been learning over the past 25 years and simplify them so much that you remember. You remember the kinking of the hose. You remember the hot air balloon in the yard and you have to cut the sandbags. Releasing that limited thinking, releasing the limited stories, that the stories of struggle. That was yesterday's that was yesterday's podcast, right? Or the last podcast. And I'm here to create that space for you to heal, to elevate, to jumpstart your life. I absolutely love the stories that my clients tell me when they do a coaching with me and we release the stuck energy, we tell a new story, we install new beliefs, and they're like, oh my God, Jen, I can't even believe how different my life is now. I just got the call for the new job. I've been jobless for two years or three years. I've had a headache for 27 years. I don't have it anymore. I got the job that I wanted. I got the money. My kids all of a sudden decided to walk in the door and clean up their stuff. I'm not kidding. My mother-in-law stopped bullying me overnight. Things changed. My relationship with my husband or my relationship with my wife got better. My relationship with my kids all of a sudden is different and different good. I want you to experience that too. I've experienced it in my life. I could go on and on about all the things that have changed and improved and deepened and broadened and the expansion that I'm feeling by standing on this mountaintop shouting at the top of my lungs, you can do it. And I'm walking side by side with you, helping you and guiding you. Just listen, just listen. So as we talk today about tapping in into our inner wisdom, this is connecting with the soul version of you. I don't even know. I don't, I, you know, I don't like using all those names like soul or spirit or whatever. It just doesn't matter. Whatever. When you sit in the quiet recesses of your mind and your body, there's there, and you sit there long enough and you tap into that energy, you know that something is with you. You know it. And if you don't believe it, well, if you don't believe it, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast in the first place. But if you don't believe it, that just means, or you're not there yet, it just means you haven't sat long enough. It's like sitting, it's like waiting. You have to sit at the park bench and wait long enough for your higher self to show up. Because we spend all this time pushing the world around. Our higher self is like, okay, let me know when you're done. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done yet? Have you sat down yet? Oh, you got to wait longer. Oh, right. You have to sit there just a little bit longer. When you sit down to meditate, for example, when you sit down to meditate, it's not going to happen right away. It's not. It's like it's like if you've never ridden a bike before and I'm going to go, okay, let's go for 20 miles today. You'll be like, okay. And you get on that bike. You're not going to go hardly 20 feet if you've never ridden a bike before. 
You're certainly not going to go 20 miles. You have to practice. The, the base of finding your, um, uh, of being able to ride a bike is the same as being able to meditate. You have to find your balance. You have to find your center. And as you sit and you shut out the environment and you, and you get the body comfortable, and then you go inward, go inward more, then more, then more. You go deeper and deeper and deeper. Then you begin to tap into the inner wisdom that lies within you that is your guidance, your support, your compass, and it, and it lights up your path. It lights up your path. And when your path is lit, then you can easily walk it. You're going to walk it anyway. God willing that you're on this planet for, I don't know, 20 more years, 50 years, whatever it is. I don't know how old you are. 63 more years, whatever it is, that God willing, your path can be lit up. I don't care if you're 89 years old. Those stories, those limiting beliefs, those those things that you tell yourself that are criticizing, that are judging, that are negative, they're not helping you. You're heading right towards a tree. You can overcome that. You can overcome it in one day. You just need the intention. And then you need to give your intention attention every day. Say more encouraging words and less discouraging ones. Okay? That's why I like using mala beads because you're going to say your intention 108 times. Mala beads are, it's a beaded necklace. um, And you, if you're familiar with the Catholic's uh, rosary, it's like that, meaning that it's a, a necklace like that with beads on it. And... And actually, it came before the the rosary, but it was founded, you know, a thousand years ago in India, and it's <clears throat> and it's been used as a as prayer beads. That's what it, that's what they're called is um, prayer beads, japa mala beads, or japa malas prayer beads. And there's 108 of them, and you set your intention. I want better health, and then you use the mantra, which is a word or a phrase that you repeat, but you repeat it 108 times. And then, you know, if you think, and I tell this my audience when I'm on stage, I tell my audience, I'm like, I want you to repeat the word hate over and over and over and over and over again, 108 times and feel, you can do it 10 times and feel how the body feels when you say the word hate over and over again. And there's a difference. Then you clear it. Then you go, okay, I'm going to say the word love, say the word love 10 times and feel the difference in your body. That's where you start. If you're very brand new at meditation, And just connecting, this is about connecting to your inner wisdom. If you're brand new, I suggest you try that. Try the words on. I love that. I tell my audience that. Try the words on. They're like, what the heck do you mean? I'm like, well, try it. Say that word over and over again and try it on your body and feel how it feels. If you are spewing complaints and negative energy and limiting beliefs and struggling stories, your body eventually starts to suffer. You start to feel stiff, not fluid. You start gaining weight. You start feeling like crap. You start attract, and then it goes further. If you keep going through all that emotional state, you start not feeling good in your body. Your physical body starts to not feel good. You keep going, you're going to attract disease, heart disease, blood disease, muscular disease, bone disease, and it goes on and on and on until eventually it's crisis. It's disaster. You're heading towards a tree. And I'm saying, by God, will you turn the steering wheel? Will you stop telling the story? So one of the very first things I want you to do, and I think I just talked, I think I just said this in the last episode, is stop telling the story. So when you start, when you feel, you got to wake up, when you feel it, and you feel yourself starting to complain, you got to stop telling the story. Here's, so I was in the, I was in a store the other day, and I'm in line, and uh, it's a cash register, or cash register, it's a cashier, and she's ringing out this guy, and it was, it was like the most bizarre though it happens everywhere. You just got to pay attention. It was the most bizarre conversation I'd ever heard. So the guy was talking about, he was a FedEx driver and he was complaining about that it was raining outside and that one of the trucks was late. And so he got a late start and then he won't get home till late and whatever. So he's going on, he's complaining. And then she's going, well, yeah, now that they shut down all of these um, self-checkouts, I now have to be at the register all the time and I'm not getting my job done. Normally what takes me an hour is now taking me, it's been three hours and I'm still not done because I have to keep coming up here to wait on people. And he's like, yeah, but you know, in the rain and then this and this, and I've got, you know, I've got a daughter at home and now she's going to be home alone until eight o'clock at night. And then she, and then the cashier goes, yeah, but you know, I'm going to be here till five and I want to get this stuff done. I'm not getting my job done. And then, you know, then my boss is going to get mad and blah, blah, blah. And they were totally like 
competing through complaining. I couldn't believe it. I'm listening to this conversation. I'm like, and then I turn around and I'm, t- so now it's my turn. I turn around and I said, how's your day so far? And she goes, good. I'm like, well, that's not what you were saying 15, you know, five seconds ago when I was listening to talk to the FedEx guy. And I said, it's so beautiful out. Like it had stopped raining. It's so beautiful. The sun came out and she goes, yeah. And I said, isn't it though? I said, and you're right here, this front row, the whole front of the store is all windows. I said, isn't it beautiful outside? Isn't it nice? It's not snowing. It's not raining anymore. I said, there's probably a rainbow out there. She goes, yeah, well, I won't see it because I'm in here. I said, well, at least you have a job. Yeah, but it doesn't pay that much. Right. But at least you have a job. And I said, oh, and, and at least I'm friendly. And she goes, yeah, that goes, that's nice. <laughs> it was just interesting that, you know, they're going to spend their their interaction together complaining. And then I come up and I'm trying to point her in a different direction. I'm like, oh, at least it's sunny. She goes, yeah, but I'm inside. At least you have a job. Yeah, but it doesn't pay much. It's just interesting. Pay attention to conversations around you and see what you notice. <laughs> about people's conversation, especially your own. So let's get to it. Let's tap into our inner wisdom. Now, you could have different ways that you, I want to say communicate or ways that you enjoy. There's lots of different ways. When I first started my business, I took an online, I took a million online courses, but I took this one and this one guy that I was um, getting some coaching from, a business coach, and he was just like, whatever your format is of how you like to communicate, do that. If you like to write, then journal. If you like to um, record, then do, you know, an audio program, like a podcast, which is what I'm doing. If you like to talk, then, you know, maybe you go on a walk and you talk out loud. If you like to um, record videos, then do that. So I found that really interesting. And I kind of use that with my clients is some people immediately when I say anything about journaling, they look like they're about to barf all over the (laughs) all over their desk. But it's a really or you could do artwork. I mean, anything to quiet the mind, but engage that the the high beta brain wave state that is busy with the 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 story and the environment. I love walking. I love driving. I love artwork. And it doesn't matter. You you know you're not doing a Picasso, but you might be doing something that busies that part of your brain. Instead of if you don't want to or can't you know, you're frustrated with meditation practice, this is another way to kind of shut the beta brain wave down, which is your very high active mental state, which is when you do sit down to meditate, that's the part that starts chattering is that beta brain wave. So we have to kind of get past that. Well, driving does it. It doesn't, and not driving and listening to anything, but driving quietly. Drive from here to the lake or drive here to go out in the country and drive. And and another is walking. Walk quietly. Don't take anybody with you. Don't don't take distractions with you. If you have dogs that walk nicely, then do that. If they don't and they frustrate you, then don't take them. And just walk a mile. You know, walk out in the country, walk out in the woods, walk on a trail, walk along the beach. It doesn't matter. And then with intentions of being present and allowing your higher wisdom to connect with you. It is really, it's really exciting because then you get ideas, you get solutions to problems, you get, but you're not telling the story. Telling the story just keeps, you're just still driving in the wrong direction. Telling the story drives you in the wrong direction. Keep that in mind. It's steering you off the bridge or steering you towards the trees. We want to get in this place of not telling the story, but creating space, creating space in my mind for my higher self or my inner wisdom to show up. Journaling is a great way to do that. But making making a list of solutions that you want or ideas that you can get, maybe just doodling or, or just drawing some shapes or whatever, doesn't matter. None of it matters. You don't have to be perfect at art. And I know that when we were in school, our art teachers were always needing us to be so perfect. And if ours didn't look like theirs and we're doing all this comparing, every single person that sits in front of me goes, yeah, but I'm not an artist. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. Everybody is creative. You can get crayons, markers, colored pencils, a regular pencil, chalk stuff, what paint, whatever you want. And you could f- do some something that just quiets the mind. Look at the bristles and how they move across the paper or across the canvas when you have a little bit of paint. Just, I love this color and you just move the brush. Nobody's going to look at it. Who cares? What it's doing is allowing you to get quiet and to go inward. 
If you have a pottery table or a pottery wheel, oh man, that is something because it engages a lot of the senses that shuts down that part of the brain and you really can open. Something where gardening, something where you're getting your hands in, maybe there's a rich smell of the soil as you're planting tulips, as you're, as you're playing with the wet clay. You know, if you just like sit in that and you just like not sit in the clay, <laughs> I just mean like sit in that silence Sit in the quiet, the creative part of it that you're just like, go back to when you're four and six and you just played with stuff and you just allow that space to be created. So that's one. And here's another one I like using. If you have a solution, it, I'm sorry, if you have a problem that you are trying to solve, this is one of my favorite things to do. I call it a subconscious journal. It's a very small notebook that sits by my bed and I date it. And I write the problem like I and I write as if I'm asking the teacher a question, right? My my inner guru, my my higher self, my hey, so I'm curious about blah blah blah. Um, I've done it when I've lost things. Um, I'll sh- I'll tell you my my alpha technique here in a second too. But um, if I've lost things that I really, it's not like I lost my keys two days ago, but it's something that I'm, I'm like, it's a picture frame of, of my mom and me with, you know, my favorite cat when I was a kid. Like, I can't find that picture frame, but it's been, you know, it's, it's not, you know what I mean? It's been a while since I've seen it and I can't find it. And I will, I will put that in my subconscious journal. And what happens is as I put that there and I go to bed thinking about that problem in a way that I'm asking for a solution. Not because I want to talk about the problem. It's like I'm raising my hand in class going, okay, I have a question about blah, blah, blah. Can you help me with whatever? And I think about the solution in a way that just like you're asking a question, you're going up to somebody at a gas station and asking for directions to your favorite restaurant. You just can't find it. Can you tell me how to? And then you wait for the answer. Well, in that waiting, that's the place that you're creating space. Does that make sense? You're creating space for the answer to show up. I love that one because I get it. I'll have a dream of where it is or someplace I haven't looked for. I haven't looked yet for the thing. And I'll get up in the morning and go right to the cupboard. I'll go right to the box. I'll go right to the basement, wherever it's stored, open the box. And there it is. And I've been looking for a week, right? The other one is the alpha technique. This is a really good one to connect, to give an idea, to help you find lost items, to help you find a a solution to a problem. So I just talked about the brainwaves a a second ago. So the beta brainwave is this very awakened state. The next one that is a very calm, relaxing state is the alpha brainwave. So you're, you're calm, you're relaxed, but you're still kind of awake. Like your brain is awake and your body is relaxed. The theta, which is your meditative state, I'm just going to tell you this once, or tell you this just one time, I mean, is um, your brain is awake, but your body is asleep, okay? You can practice those like when you're starting to maybe take an afternoon nap, so you're kind of aware of what's going on around you, but your body is like super heavy and super sleepy, like somebody could walk in and try to wake you up, and you could be, it's almost like you feel paralyzed, you're just so heavy. Not heavy, like your brain is sleeping, but your body is sleeping. I thought that was a really good way to explain that. So anyway, so back to alpha, that you are, you are, um, your body is relaxed, but your brain is awake, your body is relaxed. And so then what you do from this space is you take, you take the solution, I'm sorry, you take the kind of the problem, like I have this problem, again, like you're asking the question, not telling the story, not sending out a bunch of negative energy, but you're wanting a solution. Then what you do is wherever you're standing, wherever you're sitting, is you you close your eyes and then you look up with your eyes while your eyes are closed, like you're looking up gently. Don't do it hard, gently like you're looking up into the trees with just your eyes. This is a fast, easy way to access the alpha brainwave state. Then you count backwards from 20 while you think about the the solution coming. It's almost like I, I ask a question, now I have to wait 20 seconds for the person to respond, you know, via the live chat <laughs> or or uh, um, they're pausing because they're thinking of what the solution is. So just you're being very patient, you're ve- being very open and you're creating space for the solution. By the time you get to one, when you're counting backwards from 20 to one, 
is eventually, and here's what this happened to me, is that I just like come out of that little space and I walk right to the thing I've lost. I, I immediately have an idea. I immediately have a solution. And I just love it because we have inner wisdom, our higher self, our guardian angels, our guides, our source energy, God, whatever you want to call it, they're all here energetically waiting for us to access them. And I just love how accurate it is. I love that it works every time. I love that it, it really allows the space to be created in that moment. We just have to access it. We just have to remember to access it. Throughout the episodes, I have shared different, um, different techniques and different ways that, and, and solutions I've come across or things that I've found. But I, you just have to remember the, the human experience is different than your spiritual experience. And when I stop my human experience from reacting and doing its normal thing, you know, flying off the handle and so and so, and oh my gosh, where are my keys? That if I can go, okay, wait, snap my fingers, wake up in that moment and go, how do I access a higher version of myself right now? And what can I do? Oh yeah, I can do the alpha technique. Okay, let's do that. You have to breathe deep sometimes when you get all charged up. Sometimes you have to breathe deep, right? And when you do that, you are accessing a completely different part of your experience. You're, you're accessing a different version of yourself, a higher elevated version of yourself. So I find it to be a lot of fun to play around with this. Try to encourage yourself to move into a space of more curiosity. And the turn of this year, 2024, I have moved into, and it's really kind of fun and exciting to be like, hmm, I wonder what the solution to this will be, because I can only think of this, this, these solutions to this potential problem, and I don't like any of the solutions. So I go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it here. I'm going to go do something else, and I'm going to access a higher version of myself and get a completely different perspective. And then I trust the process. I do the alpha technique. I do a meditation. I might do mala beads. I might do, um, what do you call it, uh, the, my subconscious journal, or I might go paint something. I, I love knowing that there's a higher perspective to every single problem that we could encounter. It's exciting to know that I'm not alone on this planet. In my human form, yep, I, sometimes I might feel alone or by myself or I can only think one way. But then when I go, oh yeah, but my higher self is here. I'll ask her. And then having these different ways to access. It really is amazing. So I hope that this found you well. Oh, I want to um, share one more thing with you. I've been mentioning mala beads more often because I'm finding that people are, it's been one of my businesses for, I know it's like four years now, and you know, selling mala beads and talking about them. If you're a part of my Chakras for Beginners group, in our guides section, there is at the bottom under resources, there's a video that I did on how to use mala beads. And then you can visit my store, The Meditation Room TC, as in Traverse City, uh, dot com. And that will be that will direct you to our store. And then you can go into the little search, a little uh, magnifying glass at the top right and type in mala beads and it'll show you all of our mala beads that we have for sale. You might find something in there and each one is a different gemstone that is for a different chakra. And each of those are also listed when you go to the homepage. You'll see on the side all of the chakras that we have available um, for access and then you can you know, go, okay, I'm working on my heart chakra. And then you can find all of the items that are for the heart chakra. I thought that was a really fun way. It was actually suggested by a previous client of ours. And she suggested that we, we put them in, in a way that allows, us, allows you guys to find things a little bit easier. So kind of a fun way to, to do things. But anyway, hope this finds you well. Check out the show notes for the link to the store. And if you're not a part yet, please be a become a part of our community. Things are changing as we're moving into spring. There's classes that are coming up. There's retreats that are coming. I'm going to be rolling out a new course. I have the Mala, Be the Mala Marathon. So if you do buy Mala, uh, Mala Beads, there's a Mala Marathon that is 26, There's I think there's 28 videos, but 26 days of different ways to use your Mala Beads, depending on what you're trying to create. So I thought that was kind of, that was kind of cool to to have that, have you guys have access to that. So you can check that out. And if you can't find it anywhere, um, then uh, let me know. Uh, send me an email 
and you have the email in the show notes. So hope to see you guys soon. Take care of yourselves. And you know what? Keep accessing, keep trying, keep going, and keep looking for those nuggets. Thank you for listening. Your support means the world to me. I want to let you in on a little secret, a decision that I made. I am never going to have ads during the episodes. This will ensure that the show stays uninterrupted and in the flow. However, to keep the lights on and the tape rolling and allow me to continue dedicating my time and energy to the podcast, I am asking for your support. And to do that, I have introduced a $5 a month membership. Your contribution keeps the episodes coming and ensuring continuous improvement in content, quality, and delivery in bringing you those valuable nuggets. This is not only to support me and the show, but also an investment in your continued spiritual journey. See the show notes below for membership instructions and other ways to donate to this program. Thanks again for listening and for being an amazing support.